Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand. Merciful Father, your patience and loving kindness towards us have no end. Grant by your Holy Spirit that we may also think and do those things that are pleasing in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for the 19th Sunday after Pentecost is from Genesis chapter 2. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone, and I will make him a helper fit for him. So out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the man to see that he would call them. And Whatever the man called every living creature, that was what its, na its name. The man gave names to all the livestock and to the birds of the heaven and to every beast of the field. But to Adam, there was not found, found a helper fit for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man. And while he slept, took one of his ribs and closed up the place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. And then the man said, This at last is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh, and she shall be called woman. Because she was taken out of man, therefore... A man shall leave his father and his mother, and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked, and were not ashamed. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from Hebrews chapter 2. Therefore, 
we must pay close, much close attention to what we have heard, lest we drift away from it. For since the message declared by the angels proves to be reliable, and every transgression in disobedience receives a just retribution, now shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation. It was declared at first by the Lord, and it was attested to by those who heard, while God also bore witness by signs and wonders and various miracles, and by the gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. Now it was not to angels that God subjugated or to the word to come, of which we were are spoken. It has been testified somewhere, what is a man that you are mindful of him, or the son of man, that you care for him. You made him a little little while lower than the angels. You have crowned him with the glory and honor, put everything in subjugation under his feet. Now, in putting everything in subjugation to him, he left nothing outside his control. At present, we do not yet see everything in subjugation to him, but we see him who for a little while was made lower than the angels, namely Jesus, crowned with glory and honor because of suffering and death, so that the grace of God might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting that he, for whom and by whom all things exist, in bringing many sons to glory, such make the founders of their salvation perfect through su sufficing. For he who sacrificed and those who are sacrificed will have one origin. That is why he is not ashamed to call them brothers, saying, I will take of your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation, I will sing your praise. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I have the children of God has taken, has given me. Since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same things that through death it might be destroyed the one who has the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver all those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong salvation. For surely it is not angels that he helped, but he helped the offsprings of Abraham. Therefore he has to be made like his brothers in every respect, so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the servant of God. To make the proposition of the sins of the people. For, for because he himself was sufficient then suffered from then temptation, he is able to help those who are being tempted. This is the word of the Lord.
Please stand. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. Pharisees came up and in order to test Jesus asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of divorce and to send her away. And Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man separate. And in the house the disciples asked him about this matter. And he said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. And they were bringing children to him, that he might touch them, and the disciples rebuked them. But when he saw Jesus, but when Jesus saw it, he was indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me, do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And he took them in his arms and blessed them, laying his hands on them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please remain standing for the, um, the hymn. Seated. Grace to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God, from our text reading this morning. Some of you might remember a movie that came out in the 90s. It was about a boy that was desperately seeking attention from his family. This boy and his families were taking a family trip for Christmas. So it was the day before the family came over to his house and everybody would go together to the airport. And it was people all over the place, people packing up their luggages, getting the house ready, making sure that the house was going to be secured for when they were going to be gone. There was excitement. There was kids all over the place. And in his attempt to be noticed, he spilled soda over everybody's pizza. He went into no man's land, and that is his brother's room, and went through his personal stuff. 
And then he verbally explained his disdain for his mother because he thought that his punishment was just unfair. It just so happened that his behavior that night before got him banished to the farthest room in the house. That is the room farthest away from everyone else. In our text reading today, Jesus has finished talking with the Pharisees. And now is left with the disciples and the people in the crowd that were bringing Jesus their children. You would think that this moment was somewhat odd, that the disciples are rebuking those that are bringing the children to Jesus. Just last week, we learned of a warning that Jesus gives his disciples concerning the little ones. He said, it would be better for him if a great millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. Well, the disciples forgot that warning and they had already turned away some of the kids and their parents. And the good thing is that Jesus stopped them. The crowd were bringing their kids to Jesus that he would bless them and possibly pray for them and invoke over the kids a spiritual blessing. You see, in those days, the lives of children were not appreciated as you would think. Kids in society did not have an important role or place. They were more of a burden due to their high mortality rate. To the parents and to the family, not knowing if that kid was going to make it to a certain age made their hearts be calloused. We could say that the disciples were correct reacting the way they did. I mean, the little ones' lives did not matter much. Add to this the ambitions of the disciples that settled in their hearts. These kids were not going to help them achieve their goal, and that is the status in the kingdom of God. You see, they thought that Jesus' time and these days were better handled if he was rubbing elbows with the opulence in society in that time. He had to get his kingdom ready. So when that kingdom was ready, guess who were going to be there next to him? The new ministers, the new defense ministers, which was going to be the disciples. And, that's good. and they were going to be ready to take that place. And so the kids, ah, that was not going to help anything at all. So send them away. And so Jesus sees the mistakes that the disciples is making here. You see, Jesus didn't like when his disciples made mistakes, but when they were not treating people, when they were treating people wrong and unfair, and especially the little ones, well, the indignation of Jesus resents their action. As we think as what we think what happened here, and we put ourselves in this particular moment of our passage, we realize one thing that we are very much like the disciples at times. It might not be in the same way as they were doing, but our actions com are comparable to what they were doing. You see, we have rejected and possibly rebuked people at times. Like, you know, when you roll your eyes at people that are driving in front of you with their phones in their hand. They just don't get it, right? Or we're like the disciples when we see a fellow brother in Christ just doesn't get this church thing right. And we rebuke them and we reject them, at least in our minds. We're like one of the disciples when we see that person that you know that doesn't live close to your neighborhood, but yet he's shopping at your neighborhood grocery store. And you ask, what is he doing here? Why is he shopping here? So yes, we reject each other because we want to have a status within the kingdom, just like the disciples. 
and we will rebuke anyone that will stand in the way. In Jesus' indignation, we clearly understand what Jesus thinks of our little ones. Jesus here is an advocate for the kids, that they are also part of the kingdom of God. It has been well said that without these words of Jesus and his attitude towards the infants, the Christian church would have been far different from what it is today. I am sure that this made the disciples feel embarrassed. And so Jesus continues to say, For to such belongs the kingdom of God. For no one shall enter the kingdom unless he receives it as a little child. But wait, what did Jesus say? As a child? This statement is very astonishing in every way. One will think that Jesus would have said that the kingdom of God belongs to the adults that have had the experiences, the accomplishments, the power, the influence, and the wealth that life has given them. But no, that is not the case here. Total opposite. The child is the model and not the man. Is the unassuming humility and unquestioning nature of a child that make it the pattern for all adults. This humility and trusting nature, when they are directed to Christ, become the very essence of saving faith. To receive the kingdom and to enter it are not diverse actions when we remember that the kingdom is namely the working of his power and his grace wherever he is present. You see, we receive this as a gift. God bestows his grace on us and we enter the kingdom of God where he is working his grace. You see, he took the kids up in his arms. And that reminds me when I would take my kids up in my arms. It was not enough for him to just place his hand on them while others held him. He took him in his own arms, had his own children. And this is great. And then he put his, his hands up on them and, and made that blessing an impartation onto these kids. The Bible here gives us a very lesson. You see, Jesus did this with each kid that was brought to him. He did not just grab everybody and give them a group hug. No, he took every kid and imparted a blessing. Going back to my story from the start, you know what reminds me of? His name is Kevin McAllister. It is in Home Alone where he is sent to the odd room that was in the attic. His punishment was that he would sleep away from the rest of the house because he was just being a kid. And those that surrounded him at that time did not understand him at the moment. The rejection was tough, and his actions tells us this. He did not feel that he belonged. The rejection from the, his family made him feel alone. Unlike the movie Home Alone, you see, Jesus does things differently from us humans. He will not reject you and send you away. He will not leave you the next day and leave you in your room alone, away from him. Even when you have rolled your eyes at others, Jesus still comes to you. He doesn't just say, come. No, he comes to you and picks you up in his arms and brings you up to his kingdom. Even when you have rejected that per person because he does not get this church thing right, picks you both up together and brings you into his kingdom. And even that person that was not supposed to be at your local grocery store, you know, he picks you up and him and brings you into his kingdom. It is Jesus that comes to you even when you have rejected the shopper that is in your store. 
And it is Jesus that comes to you today. You're here today. And those that are listening online as well. It is Jesus that comes to you and picks you up, taking you into his arms and blesses you, regardless of the many times that you have been rejected. Jesus comes to you today to pour his love into your life when you feel that no one cares. Well, he cares to pick you up and carry you into his kingdom. Jesus and his love takes you in his arms, even when the world rejects you away. He has made us his, and he carries us into his kingdom. See, Jesus still carries you in his arms and making you his church, and not just a church for title purposes only, but a church that is holy, clean, without stains, and radiant. And it is in his arms where you find joy and peace, comfort, like none other. May the peace of God that transcends all understanding guard your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the gift of divine peace and of pardon with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. For the holy Christian church here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. For seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult and dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. For all those in need, for the hungry and the homeless, and for the widowed and opened, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. For the sick and dying, and for all those who care for them, including Vic, Loretta, Roach, Raymond, Isaac, Jamie, LG, Oli, Jay, Wilma, Ro Angela, Poet Walk Community, Matt, Carol, Chaya, Jimmy, Hashiran, George, Linda, Ron, Lisa, Rob, Ernie, Steve, Ralph, and Tony. And we also pray for the military service members, Renee, Scott, Dan, Kevin, Rachel, Abby, Scott, Thomas, Jim, Tim, Jonathan, Joseph, Paul, Chandler, Stephen, Michelle, Randall, Braden, Chris, Sean, Stephen, Evan, Blaze, Paul, Nathan. We also pray for the family and relatives and friends of Reverend Ronald Jackson Johnson family, Juanita Witt and Russell Wise. Please, dear Lord, comfort them and give them peace by the hope of a heavenly blessing. Let us pray to the Lord. Finally, for this and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord 
Please sit. Stand. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your heart. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly good, right, and certainly that we should at all times in all places give thanks to you, O Lord our God. King of all creation. For you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Grant us your Spirit, gracious Father, that we may give heed to the testament of your Son in true faith, and above all, firmly take to heart the words with which you, Christ, gives us to to us his body and blood for our forgiveness. By your grace, lead us to remember and give thanks for the boundless love which he manifested to us when by pouring out his precious blood, he saved us from your righteous wrath and from sin, death, hell. Grant that we may receive the bread and wine that is his body and his blood as a gift and guarantee and pledge of his salvation, graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray following the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on us as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In the name of our Lord Jesus, and Savior Jesus Christ, at his command and with his own words, we receive his testament. Our Lord Jesus Christ on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is for, for you for the forgiveness. Uh, this too, as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. In the same way, also he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me.
The peace of the Lord be with you always. Welcome to the Lord's table.
true body and true blood of Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in true faith to life everlasting, depart in peace and joy. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you, in fervent love toward one another, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor, give you peace. Amen. <laughs>